Okay, so let's go ahead and um, start our test. But just a little bit of information before we start the test. I previously charged this uh, cell up to uh, 4.2 uh, volts. And now that we have removed the uh, current and we've allowed the cell to sit for about 30 minutes before doing the discharge curve, you can see it's settled at 4.186 volts. We're gonna be discharging this battery at five amps down to three volts. And the reason I'm using five amps is because the reliable 800 watt inverter that we're going to be using will not draw more than five amps from each of these cells in the power supply itself. So let's go ahead and start this test. It's going to take about 16 hours. And when we finish the test itself, we'll have a look at the graph and we'll talk about, you know, what information we've got from this and did this battery meet the specifications um, per the build. So let's understand um, why we built this battery in the way that we have. And the main reason we built it in this way is because we planned ahead. We want a power supply that can provide at least uh, 2000 watt hours. And so at a 24 volt battery, which is 25.2 volts nominal, and an 80 amp hour capacity on each cell, that gives us just a little bit over 2000 watt hours. And if anyone's interested in understanding the math, um, please, please leave a comment and I'm happy to go over it in another video. I'm also going to be using one of these uh, reliable 800 watt inverters in this particular build. So I know that this is gonna pull a maximum in our 24 volt configuration of five amps from each of our cells. So I like to over engineer the cells because this cell is capable of pulling 40 amps, but we're only gonna use five amps uh, from any cell in this particular design at any time. So we know that we're not gonna have any heat issues. We're only pulling five amps at the maximum capacity. So we're also a look at why we put lugs on these uh, battery terminals along with two 10 gauge wires. With two 10 gauge wires, we can pull 40 amps off these cells. Um, the reason I make them all individually like this is because at some point you need to top balance these batteries. Every three months or six months or however you want to do it, you got to pull the pack apart, put them all in parallel and top balance them. This allows the battery pack to stay in really healthy condition. Uh, we could use an active balancer, but we'll get into that later in another video because active balancers can really uh, mess your battery pack up if you don't use them properly. But I do this because every now and then I like to strip down the power supplies or batteries, put them all in parallel, and I'll top balance them. Um, top balance for 18650 cells, top balancing is the way to go from what I understand and from what I've seen. And the good thing about our EBC battery tester is that it teaches a lot, so we understand why it's best to actually do a top balance on a battery. We also use this fused nickel strip. So if one of these batteries do have an internal issue and they overcharge or discharge, they will disconnect by burning through this small filament, which is right here coming off the battery, to actually not do so that we still can utilize this cell without actually having to break it down and remove that whole battery or possibly having a fire. So that's the reason. And this nickel strip is twice the thickness of regular nickel strip that you can buy on um, Amazon. It is cheaper if you look at price per foot, but it um, costs a bit for shipping and you really have to buy quite a bit of it at the same time. So you spend more money up front, but it costs you less in the long run. So these are the reasons why I built the battery in the way that I have. If you're, if, if you're not sure of any of this information, please leave a comment and ask. I'm happy to answer your questions. So let's go ahead and start our battery testing to see if this battery does actually meet the 80 amp hour requirement uh, per the battery um, packer that we, that, we, that we did previously and um, see how the charge and discharge tubes are. I just wanted to show you the beginning of the discharge curve. And as you can see here, as soon as we put a current onto the battery, it dropped a little bit more down to 4.14 uh, volts at five amps. And as you can see, the red line is actually the constant current and the blue line is the uh, voltage itself. 
and I've, I'm, I'll, I'll drop in from time to time over the next 16 hours, give you a little update, and you can have a look at the graph. So, um, thanks for you. So at this point, we've pulled 10.5 amp hours and 43 watt hours, and we're down to 3.975 volts. So I'll see you in a couple hours for another update. Okay then, we've uh, pulled about 20 amp hours and we have 80 watt hours so far. Our goal is to get about 285 watt hours. If we reach that goal, our power supply with seven of these batteries will have over 2000 watt hours. Uh, so I will keep you up to date. 12 hours and 17 minutes into the battery discharge and we're down to 3.529 volts. We have pulled 61.5 amp hours and we have 232 uh, watt hours at this time. Good morning YouTube and final update on the battery test. I did set my alarm to wake me up at 2.30 in the morning to watch this uh, test finish but I did not wake up. <laughs> so here we are looking at the saved results uh, from the test, which are still perfectly fine. We did start the test at 4.18 volts. The test finished at three volts. We ended up with a capacity of 77.27 amp hours, which is about 5% short of what we were expecting, but still good. We did end up getting 286 watt hours out of this cell and the average nominal voltage for this cell is 3.7 volts which is really important so um, knowing that we got 286 watt hours if we times that by seven because our power supply or battery will have seven of these cells we do end up with 2002 watt hours so we did reach our goal not quite as good as we were expecting this is the first time that i'm using these samsung cells um, I did happen upon them by chance, and I thought I'd give them a go, and they seem to work okay. They're not, um, they, they are cycled cells, not heavily cycled, but cycled, compared to the LG cells I usually use, which are not cycled, so we have lost a little bit of performance because of that, but still perfectly fine to use in a, in a um, battery or power supply. But if we have a look at the graph, you'll see right at the very end, it drops down sharply. So this is what's great about this EBC A20 uh, tester and software. We can um, look at the particular batteries that we create and be able to utilize them in the best way. Because if you follow this line here, you'll see that it starts to drop sharply at around about mm, 3.4 volts. Um, we drop down pretty sharp. So we know that we don't want to drop this volt uh, battery below 3.4 volts because we get 95% of the capacity before that. So knowing 3.4 volts is our really where we get 95% of the battery capacity, we don't need to utilize that last 5%. So when we set our parameters for our um, charge and discharge and our low voltage cutoff, we know we'll cut it off at that point because we've already um, received most of the capacity and we don't want to stress our cells um, at all. So that's what we found out about this. So this is one of the great things and thank you for this test. We found out we did make a good cell. And so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and make six more of these and we'll start our next video at that point. So thanks again, you two, for watching Step by Step Back to Basics and have a great day. And remember, if you buy cheap, you will buy twice and keep it simple whenever possible.